Hey, good morning, everybody. All right. So I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you all for coming. And if I don't cover the appropriate acknowledgments at the end, because sometimes I might run long, I want to thank everybody that helped put to together what I'm going to be talking out to about today. This was a huge endeavor, and there are so many people to thank for it. So if I don't, you know, I want to thank everyone at Systemic. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Pomp and his group. I want to thank um, some groups that aren't here. I won't name them, but there's a lot of people that helped out with this, and it's really exciting, and I'm hoping that no matter how you practice your art of healing, a lot of times there are simplicities that allow you to engage your patients and get them on the, the road to wellness. And there's a number of ways to do it. Many of you are very individualized, which I love, personalized medicine. But on occasion, there's times when there can be simple solutions to get them going on their path. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Now, that is in really drastic contrast to what I'm going to do to you first, which is the opposite of simplicity, right? I'm going to make your life very complex initially. It's what I do. It's what I enjoy. And <laughs> I'm hoping that even if you engage with just a bit of it, it will be enough that it will spark that excitement about how brilliant we are as beings, how brilliant um, nature is and what it can do for us and how we work and how we can work better as an individual. Nicole has been wonderful setting this up. I'm really grateful that she's given you guys the energy, the spirit to be here, the motivation to stay awake during my, my talk, okay? And then Isaac, of course, gave you some more things to think about. But as they both mentioned, we're going to get down and dirty. So don't let the steam come out of your ears too much, you know, ask questions and that kind of thing. So kicking off, I want to talk about a concept that's been used, from what I can tell, researching back at least 5,000 years, there has been the concept of detoxification, right? Or detoxication. It goes way, way back in time. Ancient Ayurvedic, TCM, and of course Egyptian, there are texts that state when they eat a lot of oil, whether it's olive or essential oil, they can produce these green um, output, right, in the, the toilet. And they didn't have toilets, but in the sewer system that they did have. And that's really what stimulation of bile production. That's a form of detoxification. There are other forms that we can talk about today, but the concept is we've been able to embrace various techniques to detoxify. Why are we detoxifying? How many of you believe that you, right now, are not being exposed to toxins? <laughs> right? You're, you are. I mean, and it's, it's, it's an increasing problem. You've heard a lot of people talk about the glyphosates in foods and drugs, and I'll revisit some of these things because these are important, but in our system around us now, even if you eat organically, and you choose your lifestyle carefully, and you purify your water, I can promise you, you are consuming these xenotoxins, or breathing them, or getting them into your skin, every day. Every day you're being exposed. The, there is a big push right now about pharmaceuticals, and each and every one of you has to deal with that with your patients. Most of your patients are probably, if they're over the age of 40, are probably on some form of medication when they come to you and then you work with them to get them off. The problem with that is even when you get them off, if you tell your patient to say, okay, you're, you're getting better, take those pharmaceuticals and get rid of them. Well, guess what happens when they get rid of them? They go right back into the environment. So getting rid of things is also a responsibility we have now because when they put it in the trash, it gets into the ground, it gets into our water, and now other people are getting that person's pharmaceutical. And that's no longer a speculative, it's a reality. Am I trying to scare you? A little bit. That's detox. We have been able to handle so many things as humans. Our bodies can handle so much. What is the central organ for detoxification? 
Louder? Liver, right? Now, there's lots of other associated uh, tissues, but the liver is thought of as, you know, the primary detoxification route for a number of reasons. It's also the, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in TCM, it's also the emotional channeler, right? So it channels and cleans emotions, your blood. How cool is the liver? The liver has really been the focus of detoxification. How many of you really have thought about the liver on a cellular level? Because that's what we're going to do today. Oh, you guys. Let's do it. Let's look at some slides. Okay, I've covered this. Here's my objectives. We're going to go over, we've covered some of the old already. And it really isn't working. There's so many models out there. You can go on the internet and type in detox or liver detox. You are going to be bombarded with juice or lemon or eat three gallons of olive oil, right? And then squeeze a lemon into your mouth. I mean, there's so many things that have happened over time. And you will get bile production up. That doesn't mean you're detoxing, right? It is more complicated. And unfortunately, it's not only a more complicated process, the things you're being exposed to are more complicated for your liver to get rid of by a long shot. It's not the simple things we used to be exposed to, right? So, oh, excuse me. Let's go back real quick. So we're going to work at the cellular level. I'm going to go through that today. These are things that happen at the cellular level. These are things that happen at the cellular level. And then at the end of the talk, we're going to get into the practical or the clinical approach to starting you down the path of proper detoxification and healing. So that's the pragmatic end of this um, morning with me. Well, we all know, I don't have to spend any time on this. I think, uh, yeah, Dr. Isaac Jones spent a little bit of time on his graphics where we are in a, a chronic inflammatory state. We all are. At some level, we are in a chronic inflammatory state. Doesn't mean you're always there, but you are there at certain times of day. If you're dealing with a difficult case, if you go home and you're, you know, you're water heater broke. There's a lot of things. You know, you get exposed to, you're on the road and you have to eat, you know, at a particular restaurant. You, you are going to be exposed to inflammatory issues. And your body has been developing this, and this is the graphic I'm pointing out, for years, right? These things that we're dealing with, and especially in your patients, have been an underlying issue for 10 years, a decade, decade and a half, maybe two decades. And then your body's doing its best to suppress and handle and compensate. And ultimately, it boils over and you're now in not only chronic inflammatory, but now your, your liver's inflamed, your cytokines are at a high level, and so on. So these are, this is a state that we're experiencing with many people. Chronic inflammation, of course, is the, one of the centerpieces. What happens when you have chronic inflammation? Th all of these things I showed you on the slide are those things, right, th that are related to that. I'm not going to spend any more time on those. You experience these on a daily basis in your office. Uh, there's some little things here we'll talk about in more detail. Uh, but it does. It affects everything. It affects autoimmune. It affects blood glucose, receptor behavior, and so on. At the tissue level, we can understand the symptomology at the le tissue level. What we want to understand today is the etiology. What is the cause of these things? We don't want to deal with the symptoms. We want to deal with the cause. So what is detoxification or detoxification? It can be said either way. It's the physiological or medicinal removal of toxic substances from the body. Yeah, of course, everybody knows that. I put this on here because we will revisit it. Has anybody ever heard that term before? Yeah? No? Smooth endoplasmic matriculum. Yeah, it's somewhere in you, right? You might have a few billion of them. Okay, what are the sources? Again, I don't need to spend a lot of time here, you guys, but... What I want to point out is that it's getting more complicated. One, because we're understanding it better, but two, we've created hundreds of thousands of chemicals on this planet, right? Even though we spend a little bit of time on glyphosate, let's say, for example, that's just the one that's ubiquitously used. We have hundreds of thousands. When you touch plastics, when you travel through a city with your window down, and, and again, I don't need, I'm preaching to the choir, I get that. That creates a really big challenge for this guy right here. Now, there's microbial processes. Do you guys think microbes produce toxins? Yeah? Louder? Do you think probiotics produce toxins? 
Yeah, they do. The guys that are helping you are hurting you sometimes. Environmental metals, organics, uh, you'll hear more about that from other speakers, I'm sure. and You've heard about Dr. Pompa talk about metals many times. Organics, so metals are one area. Organics are, there's the organics that your body recognizes, you know, whether it be from a fungus or a bacterial. You do have a chance. The liver is positioned, and we'll talk about this in a minute, to handle what we call natural um, toxins, right, from biotoxins is another way to put it. You have some arsenal to handle that. You have genetic code to handle it. You have a microbiome to handle it. What you are not equipped to handle are these man-made organical, or organic chemicals, excuse me, pesticides, PCBs, BPAs, and so on. They all will affect you, and you can't, the bugs don't know how to deal with them, the fungus don't know how to deal with them, your body does not know how to deal with them, and they can persist for decades in the body and in the environment. And drugs. Drugs are a big one. I'm going to keep coming back to drugs. Those of you that know me, I'm not, I'm not going to go out and just pick on pharma. But what I can tell you is that drugs are becoming an important issue in my world because of the work that we do at Systemic on the microbiome. The microbiome is being influenced by drugs unlike, it's unprecedented. We didn't know how much influence was happening through the pharmaceutical situation. We've always known physiologically how they impact us. But the microbiome work is starting to really elucidate so much more, 10 times the impact. OK, so again, not a lot of time there. Well, what is this little guy right here? That's liver. Most of you can't see this, but I want to point out a few things. The, the liver as a detoxifying organ is brilliant, right? It's a brilliantly conceived piece of machinery. We love it. We love it. We love our liver. It's the largest organ. The only thing I love more than the liver now for me is my microbiome organism or tissue, right? And that's personal. You can pick whatever you want. You might like your brain. You might like your heart. But this, this little guy or gal is really quite amazing. And it's amazing when you think about it at the cellular level, which we're going to spend some time at next. It's designed to help you get rid of things, help you protect yourself, help you eliminate, help you clean and detoxify and release waste and, and work with your uh, microbiome, actually, right? It's, it's really doing a lot of work. And how does it do that? Well, it uses genetics. It uses the DNA that you were given, right, that make you up. It was give, it's using the DNA of all the bugs that live with you. And it does a bunch of things. I'm going to point out a few here, and then we'll move on to the, some of the slides. But we start with the toxin that can come from anywhere. You know, we've got endotoxins. Those are, those are endotoxins, a lot of times they're bacterial produced. We've got exotoxins, those are all the external things you bring in. And then you got, down here you got lipid soluble. Have you guys ever thought about lipid versus non-lipid soluble toxins or drugs? If you think about when you eat, if you eat fish oil, you've all thought about how fish oil gets into a body, the omegas, right? They're large, fatty compounds. Your body has to manage those because what are you 99% made of? Your water. Lipids and water don't work together. So your body has to make a way to deal with them. A lot of toxins in the environment are lipid soluble. They don't deal with water, which means it's really difficult once you ingest them or breathe them in or get them on your skin for the, for the normal system, the bloodstream, the plasma, to eliminate them. Right? It's really difficult because they're not transported nicely. They get stuck in tissues. Your brain. They get stuck in your gallbladder. They get stuck in various parts of your duodenum and ileum. I mean, so these guys are problematic, right? They really are problematic. And if they live there long enough, they cause a lot of damage. The liver, in the first phase of detoxification, is it turns them into soluble compounds. That's what it does. So how cool is the fact that your liver already has these tools to take these really difficult challenges and give them the first chance to get out of you. And I want to point out here, these are all the things your liver uses, all these cofactors to do that. Well, these cofactors work at the cellular level. Again, we'll revisit this. Well, then we have intermediary, uh, and it's dangerous. The liver in its, in its process of doing this, is da it, it causes itself some damage, which is why it's one of the most regenerative tissues, because it hurts itself in the process. And then finally, it does phase two. Those, many of you know about this, but phase two requires 
a lot of what we call conjugation. That would be like saying in order for you to leave the top of a skyscraper without taking the elevator, you're going to need something. What are you going to need? Probably a parachute. The second part of phase two puts the parachute on the, on the compound so that you can get it out of the body. What are those things? Methylation groups, acetylation groups, glutathione, and they're right here. Um, we can use sugars, glucuronidation. You guys heard of that? That'll come up again later. Uh, we can throw amino acids onto these things. As you tag these drugs and these toxins for elimination, you're using a lot of tools. Think about it. You're using a lot of energy, ATP. You're using a lot of things like glutathione, a lot, a lot. You're using a lot of methyl groups. And the more toxic you are, the more you're using all these things. You're using all these vitamins and minerals. So if you're toxic, you're robbing the rest of your systems to, get, to, to keep your body alive, right? And you can rob things like epigenetics because those don't harm you immediately. It could take 30 years for an epigenetic change to impact you. So your body knows that. And so your body will say, well, you're going to die tomorrow, right? This is, the innate, this is the innate intelligence. You could die tomorrow if I don't get rid of these compounds. But in the process, I'm probably going to rob from my epigenetic supply of methylation or acetylation. Your body makes that choice because he knows or she knows that that's an innate intelligence. Really, when we think about this at the cellular level now, because I'm still at the tissue level, we will go this direction. We're going to go down to innate intelligence and deeper. So again, let me review quickly. They convert soluble to more water soluble. We deal with all these types of things, prescriptions, additives. The group of enzymes, you don't have to memorize this. There won't be a quiz yet, but there will be by next time. So. All of you need to come to the intensive because there will be a quiz and there will be some interaction. But some of the enzymes are called cytochromes. You guys heard that name? Cytochrome P450, cytochrome P2. Cytochromes are the first phase. They're critical to this process. And they use a lot of things like B vitamins and minerals and flavonoids and so on. So we care about that. They oxidize. They hydrolyze. They dehalogenate. Does anybody know what dehalogenation is? If you, what's, uh, let's pick on Toothpaste, right? I know Kurt will like me doing this. Uh, what's found in toothpaste that can be problematic? Fluoride. That's a halogen. So if you get a lot of halogens, if you get a lot of fluoride in your tissue, this guy has to go work overtime to get rid of it. And if it doesn't, of course, it builds up and starts causing problems. But you're putting all this work at the cellular level of these enzymes in the first phase of your liver, right? Now. Phase two, conjugation. This one's kind of fun because it, it looks at the bigger process now. Now it's, it's going from, okay, we've, we've done these reactive things. Now let's start using the bigger tools we have like glutathione, which is so critical. Um, you've heard Dr. Pompa speak about glutathione multiple times. It is critical. What else is critical? Well, glutathione, glucuronate, sulfates, acetates, and methyl groups. How many of you guys people, how many of you heard about these as important to your health and nutrition. Yeah, these guys. Here is one area that they're critical. Now again, two of these, so this guy is used where? Everywhere, right? I mean, it's used in every tissue. It's absolutely required. Again, if you're toxic or you're detoxifying a ton, you're robbing yourself. What about these guys right here, the acetate methyl? Anybody know what else those do? Butyrates as well. Hormones? Absolutely. Hormones, dopamine, serotonin. Um, they're used in the epigenetics we talked about, methylating DNA. Uh, acetate is the acetylating of DNA to turn genes on and off. So there's two ways that you can control a lot of your body systems, and they use these guys right here. It also taxes. This one, if you're using a lot of that, you'll tax your microbiome because your microbiome produces a lot of this for you. So as you'll put stress on the microbiome when you're depleting your system of this, right? And there's carbohydrates that then you need certain really cool polysaccharides to stimulate the microbiome to get you back into a good status of acetates, right? Anybody ever here crave vinegar? You guys ever crave like vinegar, um, acetates, or kombucha, or things that contain vinegar? If you ever have those cravings, you know, I have no idea if there's a scientific correlation, but that, that's right there. That's your acetate. Acetic acid is what that is. Uh, sorry, that was a, that was a digression, but still. 
Uh, phase three, we don't talk about phase three much, but it's real. Phase three is once you've done all this in the liver, how do you get rid of everything? Do you have the proper pathways to get rid of it? Because if not, you're now blocked again. And again, we get back to like TCM, the liver has to be open, has to be flowing, whether it's the emotional and or the blood flow. The chi, right, has to make sure that's happening. And then from a scientific standpoint, if you don't, you're going to end up with fatty liver disease, which has nothing to do with drinking alcohol in many cases. That's a rising in, uh, issue, by the way. Fatty, fatty liver disease is on the rise, and it's not related to alcoholism. It's related to dysbiosis and toxins. So dysbiosis and toxins are leading to fatty liver disease at an unprecedented level. So we've got the bile. We know how that works. We'll revisit that. Kidney, you know, through the urine, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. We track to toxins in the duodenum. And then what about the microbiome? beta glucuronidase. Again, we'll revisit each of these at the cellular level. And what I want you to now start doing once we get into the cellular level is think about the tools you have, because at the end we are going to have a mini quiz. What tools do you know of as I talk about these things? You know, kidney. There's a tool that we offer in the kidney world. I'm gonna, I want you guys to think about that. Uh, bile, same thing. So we'll, we'll, we'll move forward, because it's gonna culminate in the tool that you guys need. Exit routes, liver, gallbladder, we'll spend most of our time here. Uh, skin, kidney, lungs, those are all exit routes for these things. And then the neutrobiome, or otherwise known as the microbiome. These are all exit routes. And I've, I've read, in some cases, the skin is responsible for up to upwards of 20% of your toxin elimination. That was new to me. Now, it's certainly true for more active people that are engaged in, you know, you're sweating, and that, that's true. Uh, bile is a, the, probably the, the largest exit route, the bile in the urine, but the skin could be considerable in this case. So let's jump into the cell. I want to, oh, perhaps one of the most difficult parts is now going to enter your guys' world. So take a deep breath, okay? Take a deep breath because we're going into the cell. Now it's phenomenal, it's fantastic, but it, it, it can be a little bit um, taxing. In the cell, there's things you guys have heard us say many times. We've got five R's, which is you know, remove, repair, mitochondria. These are all cellular. I want you to keep this in mind. Membranes are critical. Mitochondria are critical because they make your energy. We have inflammation, which I mentioned before. And then this down here, epigenetics, DNA, telomeres, that's all inside the nucleus. These are, we can find the home for all these terms that you guys are subjected to during my talks. We can look really at the cell and say, oh yeah, okay, I get that now, right? We all know that the DNA is in the nucleus. The nucleus has a membrane. These things become important right now, okay? So I have a movie. And while we're queuing up the movie, I want to point out a few things about the movie. It is just a simple animation of liver cells, the lobule. Have you guys have all heard that term, the lobule? And there's some brilliance there. There's some really fun brilliance in terms of the way the lobule's composed, how it's designed. It uses symmetry and geometry, and it's a really fascinating tissue when you look deep into it. Uh, the way blood flows in. It has two blood sources, right? What is the major source of blood flow into the lobule. Anybody want to guess? Or the liver, the lobules. And it's terrible for the liver, but it's necessary. It's called the portal vein. The portal vein is what carries everything from your ingestion directly to the liver. So your, all of your intestines that take up, everything from the mouth down is connected to the portal vein and all of those nutrients and toxins and other things get transferred into the portal vein and then directly into the liver. And whenever you're ready. The liver is an important as well as structurally and functionally complex organ. One of the important functions of the liver is to receive and take up nutrients and other molecules absorbed from the intestines before the blood is returned to the heart via the inferior vena cava. The liver has dual blood supplies, one venous and one arterial. The portal vein, which carries blood from the spleen pancreas, and intestines contributes about 75% of the blood volume to the liver. 
This blood is rich in nutrients and other absorbed molecules, but relatively poor in oxygen content. The hepatic artery, a branch of the celiac trunk from the abdominal aorta, contributes about 25% of blood volume entering the liver. This blood is well oxygenated, but nutrient poor. Blood from the portal vein and hepatic artery mixes as it enters and passes through a liver lobule, the classical structural unit of the liver. Blood then percolates through the lobule and is collected by the hepatic or central vein. Central veins unite to form larger sublobular veins, which ultimately join the hepatic veins. Blood flows to the heart via the inferior vena cava. Bile comprises the exocrine secretory product of the liver. It is stored in the gallbladder. During digestion, bile is released from the gallbladder through the cystic duct into the duodenum to aid in the digestion of fats. The filtration of blood and the production of bile takes place within the structural and functional unit of the liver, the lobule, where the terminal branches of the vessels carrying incoming and outgoing blood meet. The liver lobule is roughly hexagonal in cross-section. In the center of the lobule lies the central vein, which collects blood from the lobule and carries it to the hepatic veins. Located at the lobule periphery are branches of the vessel supplying incoming blood, the portal vein and the hepatic artery. Also located here is the bile duct. Collectively, the portal vein, hepatic artery, and the bile duct together comprise the portal triad. Taking a horizontal cross-section of the lobule gives us an arrangement typically seen in histological preparations. In this view, we can identify the central veins and associated portal triads. There are two prevailing views of liver lobule organization, the classic liver lobule, or anatomical model, and the liver acinus. The classic liver lobule is based on the structure of the lobule we just discussed. It is hexagonal in shape and is defined by portal triads surrounding a single central vein. To identify a lobule in a histological slide, first find a central vein. Next, locate the portal triad surrounding that vein, usually about six, at the corners of the hexagonal prism. An imaginary line connecting the triads represents the outside border of the lobule. In the classic liver lobule, blood flows from the portal triads toward the central vein. Bile flows in the opposite direction, from the central position toward the portal triads at the lobule periphery. Remember, the classic liver lobule model emphasizes the anatomical structure of the lobule. The liver acinus is another way to view liver structure. This there. model is important for understanding liver physiology and pathology. So why would I show you that? Right? That's, you guys have seen that probably back in college, chiropractic school, and so on. It looks like a pretty, you know, that you've probably seen those slides and looked at liver damage and liver disease. What I want you to think about at this point is we have a better understanding of what goes on in between all of the tissue functions. So for example, you saw that this is a lobule. What they don't really go into, and I want to point out, is that there are literally thousands, okay, thousands of cells between this space, right? This is all made up of thousands and thousands and thousands of cells. And we are trying to heal people at the cellular level. What does that mean for this model? Well, if you are a, if you just consumed toxins, right, and we know that the portal vein comes in right here, and it dumps into the liver its contents from the blood, and then these cells gradually clean that blood, sending the clean blood through the central artery, right, or excuse me, vein, back to your heart, so that you have nice, clean blood to, to oxygenate and send to the rest of your body. These thousands of cells have so much work to do, and it's a gradient. At the same time, these same cells, these hepatocytes, are producing bile, each and every one of them, and shifting all the toxins back to the bile duct with the bile. Right? So if you think about this, these are amazing jobs going on in order to protect you from everything you're exposing yourself to and everything your microbes are exposing yourself to. That's why we want to think about how to take care of you at this level. Because the damage, it might take, as Dr. Jones mentioned, it might take 20 years for 
the damage that starts occurring here and where there's a high concentration of toxins to work itself throughout this lobule to where liver damage starts showing up. Which is why that kind of damage can actually take a lifetime to kill people, right? We don't want that. We don't want to come into someone's life and have to deal with 10 years of damage if we don't have to. But if we do, what are our tools? How do we want to do address it? We know that if we can start at the cellular level, we can start pushing back against this process. That's why I showed you this animation. So let's get deeper into the cell now. Oops, I jumped. All right, where do you think all the work happens? I'm going to go over the cell again for you really quickly. I'm not going to draw it. I usually draw it, but I figure this is a little better artwork. Oops, this right here, what is this? That is the nucleus. That houses all of your DNA. That you can thank your parents for, right? They gave you that. That's what your parents gave you. That's got all your genetic code. This right here is called rough endoplasmic reticulum. You will not be quizzed on that later. But what you will be quizzed on, and I want you taking notes from here on out, is right here. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum, okay? The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is where the magic happens for the liver. How many times have you heard Dr. Mop and I and others, Jack, say, hey, we need to take care of our membranes. We need to take care of our DNA methylation. We need to take care of our glutathione production and the glutathione enzymes. We need to take care of, and so on, right? At the cellular level. Here we now have a new, we're introducing you to a new organelle. We're going to do this over the years. We're going to introduce you to new, new family members of the cell. And this is our newest family member. Welcome, everybody welcome the, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Welcome smooth endoplasmic reticulum to our care and concern. Why? Because that's doing all the work. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, geez, I'm going to have to say S-E-P, no, S-E-R. The SER is doing all that heavy lifting for you. It's the one that is got all the cytochrome enzymes in it. It's the one that has all the transferases in it. It's the one doing the work and creating the bile and sending that back out and protecting you. It's in the cell. So when you think about the liver, I want you to now think about the SER. That's where the work is happening. The nucleus isn't doing it. The mitochondria isn't doing it directly. But the SER is. Now, does the SER need all those other guys? Absolutely. One thing to point out, what is the SER surrounded by? Membranes. What is the SER connected to? The DNA and the and it's actually literally connected to the nucleus in DNA because they communicate. What, um, what's my next one? What about the, so we've got the membranes, we've got the DNA association. Do you think there's a lot of glutathione in this, process, in this organelle? Yes, indeed. A lot of antioxidants are in there. Do you think there's a lot of vitamins in there? Do you think there's a lot of acetyl groups and methyl groups and so on? Yes, there are. It's all happening in this guy right there. What do you think he's partnering up? What do these guys? Anybody know? Want to get, take a guess? Those of you that have been with me should have at least a 25% chance. What is it? Mitochondria. Mitochondria. They're partnered up. Guess why? A lot of ATP to clean us, right? It takes ATP to keep that smooth end of SER running properly. So what I'm trying to hopefully paint for you right now is a picture of why we care about looking inside the cell. It's not enough to just to say, let's liver detox. No. We need to care about this guy right here. Or girl, however you might think, you know, whoever's cleaner. <laughs> Probably girl, you know, at least to college years. All right, that's why we focus on the cell. What is it that makes systemic different? And I'll revisit this, and you guys have heard this. This is a plug for systemic. We have herbalomics, and the nutribiome. We take advantage of how herbs can be used to help us with the SER, and we take advantage of how bacteria and other prebiotics can help us with the SER. Right? Those are two terms that we use frequently to describe our approach to healing, both through herbs and through probiotics and prebiotics. Right? And they affect our genetics, our epigenetics, and they affect our um, probiotics, which is great. Those, that's just our, that's our approach. That's our philosophy to healing. It's one of our major tenets. 
Okay, number one, membrane, right? You now know where that membrane is. It surrounds the SER. So we want membrane, we want membrane support. I put it in here. This slide has been used in the past when I talked about other membrane issues. It's now a family member. Keep in mind, we've got a new family member. We just had a new baby. All right. What does the membrane do? You guys, the membrane is responsible for that whole communication. It traffics things in and out. It tells you when somebody can pass and somebody can't. It's the gatekeeper. It's the communicator. It deals with hormones. It deals with neurotransmitters. It is the thing that communicates each cell's world to the environment. And same with the SER. The SER is communicating with the nucleus, with the mitochondria. Do you think the membrane of the SER has to be maintained healthy? Yes, it does, in order to do its job. If the membrane's breaking down, the SER isn't going to be working properly, and now we've got problems because it's full of toxins, right? The SER is full of toxins. Until it gets rid of them, they're there. So there we go. So they do traffic, toxins, and they've got to get rid of the toxins. There's got to be a way for that to get out. Uh, we've got the mitochondrial membrane. Now, I want to point out here, because we're going to get to some of the important cofactors we mentioned, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and so on. The mitochondria actually is really important for what we call micronutrients, microminerals, microvitamins, right? It's really important for the, 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 the minerals you don't talk about much, the cobalts, the manganese, the coppers to some degree. Those find their way into the mitochondria because there's some unique enzymes in the mitochondria. So I wanted to give that little plug there because we'll revisit that as well. What about the... Um, Power plant, right? Power plant's important, isn't it? In fact, that is where a lot of toxins slowly take you down, right? You've heard of mitochondrial diseases. Those are the things that gradually deplete you of energy, deplete you of strength, and allow inflammation to set in. Also, the mitochondria, although the SER is full of toxins, the mitochondria is the most free radical generating piece of your cell because it's trying to make energy, and in the process, there's the byproduct of free radicals, oxidative compounds. So it has to be maintained. What do you think in the mitochondria, what's a, an antioxidant that I've already mentioned to you that's found in high levels in the mitochondria? Glutathione. Yeah, so there we go. We now have, we're con I'm trying to connect these pieces, right? So this is part three now. We're at, we're at the mitochondria. If this is functioning properly, it's going to allow your SER to function properly, and you can now properly detoxify that cell. Now times that by, you know, the few hundred million that we need to deal with, and that's why this is so important. All right, glutathione. It's a reducer. So what does it do? You guys, I can't go more than 10 minutes of my talk without giving you some biochemistry. So here you go. This stands for glutathione. These are bad guys, electrophiles, oxidants, radicals, metals, disulfides. Glutathione does all these great things for you, okay? It's one of the things that helps move these things out of your body. Without it, you struggle. They build up, you start running into to oxidative damage, can damage your DNA, it can damage your membranes, it can damage many things. This is just the process of recycling glutathione. Right, you have the mechanisms in your body to recycle glutathione. But you also need to make it, right? There needs to be a nascent version because you will consume it. And that way you need to keep replenishing, which is what we do. That's what we do on our side of things. Okay, there's the biochemistry. What about methylation? Everybody's really excited about methylation. We think of it, generally speaking, as it relates to epigenetics and neurotransmitters and other things that, you know, improve our well-being. But it can be consumed Oftentimes, it's consumed in the process of detoxification, leaving you short with your other needs, cellular needs. Uh, we know that it can reverse damage your genes. These are the switching. These are the other things. Telomeres. Does everybody know what telomeres are? Do we care about telomeres? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, you know, some people refer them to the aging clock. Or, but they are sensitive, and it's the way, it's the way we're built. We are immaculate and amazing. But because we have linear DNA, we can't quite catch the ends every time we copy it. So every time you make a new cell, you lose a little bit of the end. Without telomeres, you would get in trouble because your DNA would shrink. Telom telomeres are maintained by something called telomerase. And guess what? Do you think there are natural 
things that can help us with our telomeres? Absolutely. Yes, there are. We love those things. Um, there are critical nutrients we mentioned. At the end of the talk, we're going to revisit genetic polymorphisms briefly. And it'll become much more important when you come to the intensive in the fall. Okay? And then there's unparalleled cellular metabolic detoxifier. It really is. The, what we've gone through so far, when you think about the liver to the lobule to the cell, how cool is that when you actually get into the SER, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Everybody say that for me. Say it faster. <laughs> you guys cheated. Some of you said SER. I should have been more clear in my request. Uh, and then let's don't force the body to prioritize by being toxic all the time. Those of you, I want to make a note here. Those of you that practice very personalized medicine, which I applaud and love, and I'm all about personalized medicine. However, there are times when you can simply try to detoxify somebody using your tools before you then revisit the personalized need, right? Whether you're using um, AK or um, various pieces of equipment, there are times that just a detoxification can set you, set the tone for the body. And it actually will tease out things too. It'll tease out how the liver's functioning, how the SER is functioning, where they're lacking, methyl, are you depleted, and so on. So. Uh, epigenetics, I couldn't bypass this. Does everybody, has everybody heard the story about the agouti mouse in here? Yeah. Yes. Yes? If you haven't, there's a quick review. This mouse, okay, these are called agouti mice. They were bred to study heart disease and diabetes and so on, right? So these, a these animals were bred to be problem children. They were bred to be the, the curse that's plaguing modern humans, right? It's kind of cruel. I'm not going to go down that road. But they gave us this amazing understanding into what's happening in our bodies. And one of the things that we never, and scientists never would have predicted this, that something like BPA can induce switches in DNA behavior, it's turning genes on and off, that then sets into motion diabetes, heart disease, chronic inflammation. How does it do that? Through methylation processes. So what they did is they take these mice, they expose them to good methylation nutrients, right? Folic acid, well, not folic acid, but the 5 methyl tetrahydrofolates, the other folates, B12s, um, SAMI, and, and they can reverse this process. It's that simple. Do you think they were looking for that? Do you want me to tell you what they were looking for to do this, to fix this problem? What were they looking for? A drug. Do you think they were surprised when they figured out that you could use these supplements or what a lot of people call expensive urine, right? And they reverse it. How cool is that? Now, that, that got a lot of good press and it helped us out a little bit. And I won't, you know, I won't get on my high horse, but we do, we do as an industry have to, and as, as you guys have to, put out the good things we do over and over again. I know um, Isaac was saying how we have to do that in our own personal lives. We have to do it for each other because we're not always seen as, as being able to make these great choices for your patients as, as we do, right? You're a caring group. You're the most caring group. You're the most caring part of healthcare um, that we have, which is why you're successful, which is why people will keep coming back and want to solve problems that they couldn't get an answer to for months and months and months, right? They've given up on many, many, options until they come to you guys and, and you spend the time, you resolve their issues and they feel better and then it's a win. It's a win for everyone. That's good. That's goodness being portrayed into the world, projected into the world. We need to do that whenever we can. This happened to be one case where we could. The goody mice. Now what they also found is how, how did we get to this place? You know, we know how to get a mice like this in the laboratory, but are there things in the environment that are causing this? that are related, so they started playing with things. Well, it turns out, and there's more, but BPA, BPA can cause this. How scary is that? It's in most plastics, most um, polymers is what we call them, and we don't know how much it takes to trigger this, but what I can tell you, and you guys have heard me say this before, I'm an advocate of young people, and the younger exposure, the more dangerous, 
However, it's more reversible. So the more you can help people, the younger, it's more reversible. Your successes will escalate. And for moms, we don't know dad yet, for moms it's passed on. So they can trigger using BPA this and she will pass it on to her children without the children having BPA. Does that make sense? So it's a bad gene turned on and now it's being propagated. But you can't turn it off. So that's my advocation for little people too. That was kind of a fun story that we were able to say, hey guys, we are on the right track. Telomeres we've talked about, we know they're related to Alzheimer's, aging, hypertension, so on. We can protect them in a number of ways. We've spoken about most of those today. So let's review. We're, we're into the cell. We've now looked at various things in the cell. Hopefully you've started making connections to what goes on inside a cell and detoxification. Because now we're going to get into the pragmatic piece of what do you do about it? How, what tools do you have in your practice to do that? So the model, of, it no longer works. The simple models don't work. Um, steer your clients away from Google. Google de detoxifying things, right? Not a good idea. Uh, we need to work at the cellular level. And these are some of the key features of working at the cellular level, among others. Uh, so now let's talk about some of our next objectives and then how can you access that through your world. I wanted to throw this up here. We're not going to go over this. This is just a graphic so that you can remember. Please think about the SER and the membranes and all the things associated with that little cell. When you're looking your patients in the eye, they don't need to know what you're thinking, right? And if you do draw a blank, I'll know that you're actually thinking about it if you have that blank look because it's, it's fun for your brain to stall in that moment. But you're thinking about the cell. You're thinking about how can I get this person better by thinking about how to repair their smooth endoplasmic reticulum and make it work well. And if you say that to them, you know, you never know. You might get a laugh out of it. Now, our next objectives. Prep phase, body phase, and brain phase. These are terms that um, were created with Dr. Pompa, and he's going to talk to you more about what he's gone, he's taken this concept and created a lot of really fun things around it. He's going to have all that fun to present that to you. I'm not going to even go there. Uh, he's using this concept. He's succeeding using this, and so a number of people are. It's been really fun. What does that mean? Well, these are right behind me. I told you we get to practicalities. Those of you that recall back in the day when, when we do, and many of you still use, packages. Right? Have you guys, do you guys remember our packages? We've got you know, the GI wellness and purge. We've got um, the detox and so on. Wonderful packages. We've had wonderful results. And everything going into these things now have a really large body of history. They've been used by thousands, and there's some history there, right? All the way back to the beginning of, and predate the beginning of systemic formulas, right? These are wonderful, wonderful products that we wanted to simplify. Remember I told you how complica complicated it was going to be? I did it. You've now made it through the gauntlet of complication. Congratulations. Okay, we're now in the simple part. We're now distilling down everything I've said into something that you can actually use in your practice. And these are things you can use. Even if, I believe, even if you do practice very personalized medicine, these can be a kickoff, a starter kit for many, many people to get them going. What are they? Well, there's four phases, and I need to put them in order to make a little more sense out of it. And I'm going to walk you through some of the simplicity. And like I said, there will be more people talking about this later. And I'm going to stand back, and I'm going to shine the light on them. Prep phase, body phase, brain phase, and cellular vitality. A quick definition. Prep phase, get the body ready for what you're about to do. Second part of the detoxification is body phase. Body phase encompasses many of the concepts I covered today. I did not cover brain phase in a lot of detail because, again, Dr. Bob might cover that, and it's a whole other beast, right? The brain is a beast of its own. It will trap toxins differently than anything else. There's the, what's called the blood-brain barrier. So there, the brilliance is separating out the brain phase. And I'm, and I'm shortening this, but there's more to be learned by this. And then there's cellular vitality. That's the ongoing process. Okay, again, deep breath, because I know I'm covering a lot. So the next thing I've got is 
I want to reintroduce you to the idea that every one of these contains this concept, right? Going all the way back to grandpa's formulas, which are in here, to the modern formulas, it encompasses this philosophy of energetics and healing and now the microbiome, right? And now we know how herbs interact with us at a much more detailed level than we've ever known in the past. So these concepts have now been applied. So why? Why are we introducing this? We have some experience with packages. In fact, packages go back before, there's even like packages that go back 20 years as systemic formulas. They're a concept that can be utilized and now we've evolved that to this next level. So it can transform lives. It's already happening. Simplicity and compliance. Nicole asked this great question. And not everybody raised their hand, which I'm quite shocked. You guys are fantastic. But it's hard, at least from our perspective when we do clinicals and things, to keep people compliant, right? And when you look them in the eyes, did you take that? Did you take it every day? Did you take it when I told you to take it? If they pause, oh man, yeah, mm -hmm. I did. Okay, did you run out? No, okay, then you didn't. <laughs> you know, I mean, we know that compliance is an issue and I'm with you guys. I've, I'm trying to stay congruent with my own products, right? I, mean, we, I eat stuff every day, but sometimes I'll go three days and go, oh, guess what? I forgot to take my fiber every day. I notice it, right? If I don't take my fiber every day, I get a feedback loop from my gut. Same thing with NBC. So there is these things that you can tell your patients too and can tell you when they are and aren't, aren't compliant. But compliance was a big issue. It's one of the reasons, you know, these packages are so phenomenal. And I'll get to uh, years of experience. Yeah, plus we've got that. Plus that's just systemic and we got, you know, tons of people involved in that. Uh, unparalleled research. I'll get into a little bit of that later. Uh, some of you have seen it because we're revisiting a lot of the cellular formulas you guys have been exposed to because they're in these packages. And then, we, of course, we've got real accountability and passion. Real accountability. I believe that's important. We, um, we fix what isn't working and we modify. This isn't the first attempt at this. Uh, this is, you know, many iterations. And we're excited. And again, Dr. Pompa will be able to get you even more excited. But the accountability is we want this to work. We don't want this to be just a package. And if there are modifications need to be made, we make them. And we've made a number over the years. We've made modifications to almost every cellular formula since it was first launched, right? Based on whose feedback? Your guys's, right? We have. We've made these modifications based on you. And I think this is, we've already getting success with these packages. Unbelievable. And I should mention for customer services sake that the demand is outpacing the supply right now. So when you order these, it's a FIFO. You guys have heard of FIFO or FIFO in inventory? First in, first out. If you're good, you need to order yours because we're going to time stamp these things, right? First in, first out. Because it's going to take us, it can take us anywhere from a week to three weeks depending on the volume of orders to get you caught up again after this show. So if you're first, you're going to get it first and so on. We are investing heavily into train keeping up. We've already invested heavily in the last six weeks. Those of you that have experienced these already, we've already invested a lot to get caught up to where the first launch was. So yes, we're going to keep going down that to try to, to perform for you all. But, but from a practical standpoint, first in, first out for all of you. And that's part of our accountability. And you know, we're passionate. This, we love doing this. Now the quiz time. Quiz time. The boxes are right here. Let me show you a few pictures. I'm going to get a drink of water while I'm at it. Go ahead and drink if you'd like. All right. Let's look at a few things. I'm going to bust one of these bad boys open. They got tape on it. They got to protect them, seal. So I'm going to have to break the seal, dang it. I want to show you something. I've described the outside of the package and, and what you're looking at up on the slide, guys and gals, and men, and women, and everyone, you're looking at what's in there, okay? Now, they're in there in a very deliberate schedule, and I do believe Dr. Mom is going to go, you know, into more of this, but they're in there in certain phases. I have not listed them in any phase order. Each phase has a different 
grouping of products. But here they all are. I'm going to use my pen to use a pointer. Not going to happen. Where's my pointer? Here's the quiz, and you're going to have to participate in this quiz. I want participation. Moore's, where's Moore's description? Methylation? Yes. Where is it? Ah, yes, phase two, guys. Yes, there we go. See how we're now re correlating this to the SER? How about L liver? Say it louder. Got it. Perfect. You guys are good. You guys listened. Thank you for not sleeping. Uh, E-energy. Make ATP for cells. Very good. How about G-cell? Ah, phase two glutathione. I'll come over here for you guys. Phase two glutathione. Ooh, right there. You can draw lines in your book if you'd like. Okay. I'm going to walk around in a second and check your books. <laughs> All right, how about bind? Elimination support? No. Oh, yeah, very good. Okay, how about K kidney? Ooh, is that a tough one? Elimination support, is that what I hear? Very good, very good. ALA, that stands for, that, that one's kind of cheating, I didn't spell it out, that stands for alpha lipoic acid. Yep, so actually it does more, but I put it on here as um, oxidative brain protection. There's a lot of descriptors, I use that one in case that one gets you, gets you messed up. How about Vista 1 and 2? Membrane, now's your membrane one right there, straight across, right? How about sp Spectra 1? Oh yeah, organic vitamins and minerals. How about MIN? Where's that at? Oh, replenish trace minerals. Where were we using trace minerals? We use them everywhere, but where did I mention it today? The SER and the powerhouse, the mitochondria. Uh, we use a lot of zinc in the, in the nucleus, but those are that we don't really, you know. How about MBC? Right here, microbiome. That's critical. And surprisingly, we don't know the answer to this yet, you guys, but based on this wor work with, you guys remember BIND and glutathione and NBC in previous work, and you guys have probably used it in your, in your clinics. There is a interplay, and we know a little bit more about it, but I should mention NBC and BIND have a unique relationship. Carbon and the fulvates and humates interact with your commensal, symbiotic, and probiotic organisms. We don't know exactly how, but they can change certain patterns in the behavior of the, of the GI tract when you take them. So a lot of times, people will experience less bloating or less degassing after they take bind. And we now know from microbiome studies that there is an interaction, and carbon is one of the key players in that. We also know that these organic humates and fulvates can offer up um, food source for some of these bacteria. And they'll use them, they'll metabolize them, they don't produce gases from them. So there is this really unique interplay that's not well understood between these two guys. So I'm really glad they're both there. But what I want to point out, and maybe a little bit later, if I have some time, is that the microbiome is so critical in maintaining detoxification, right, beyond the initial lobule work or the SER work. And then, of course, DV3. Anybody want to take a gander at that one? Immune. Good job. In this case, immune. Especially when you get it above and beyond. That's why our D levels need to be a little bit higher. Especially when you get above and beyond the, the, the demand for bone health. Right? You have to get those levels higher than the minimal because then it's all going to be used for maintaining the calcium homeostasis in your body. You need to go higher than that in order for there to be enough to start regulating other genetic and it acts like a hormone, honestly. It's a hormone. Uh, from that quiz, most of you did really well. I don't know, this side of the room, did you guys shout anything out? All right. Okay, back to this. So here's the products. 
Uh, there are a lot of now new ways to learn more about the packages. I wanted to give you guys the products. Here's what they look like. And on the boxes, they say things like, and they go, they're getting boxed. And so when we talk about compliance and simplicity, which you know I love, I really do embrace it sometimes, you tear off the bottom, morning, evening. So they reach in, pull a morning, in the morning, take it. In the evening, they'll pull an evening. When the prep phase is done, they'll tear off the front. They've got morning, evening, and nighttime. Now, nighttime happens to be, of all these formulas, which one you think should be taken away from everything else? Bind. So bind is here. Now, brain phase gets a little more complicated because the brain is very complicated. You've got blood-brain barrier. You've got lots of uh, neurological tissue. You've got morning, evening. Morning, evening. You have then the brain and the nighttime. So you just spin it around, right? And then finally, one, the simplest one, is the cellular vitality. That's what packages are going to start looking like in the future for us, right? I personally like it. I, I use our packages. And I don't know about you guys, but there are times when I get to work and I had my, hand, my pocket full of the pills, you know, and I'm going to eat them. I'm like, wait a second. Yesterday there were seven. Now there's six. Where did I do, right? And I know your patients are doing that. As good as they are, this does simplify things. It really does. So let me, let me give you guys some retro. Let's go a little retro. Yes, ma'am? Oh, what the packages look like? Yeah, so this is, the, this is what the cassettes look like. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug the people that have worked on this. Like I mentioned, you know, Dr. Pompa's group has been phenomenal. But then production. They engineered this box. This does not how boxes come. Why did they have to engineer this thing? Because it becomes so labor intensive to count, to first make these, count these, stack these. I don't know about you guys, but have you ever had a, I'm trying to think it would be, imagine a, a deck of cards that are uneven. You put those 30 in your hands, what's the first thing that's going to happen? <laughs> they spread everywhere. Right, so it's, um, want me to hold it up? Yeah, sorry. I'll even take them out, you guys. So they engineered this cassette. So production went through and designed a cassette, sent it off to the box guy, and they made it. So this actually changes the quality, the speed, the accuracy, and so many things. So they really got involved. At every level, people were passionate about this. And people at, our, at Systemic take a lot of our products. They were also excited to have simplicity, right? They really were. It's awesome. So there's. Here's another package. They come out the bottom, but that's what they look like. And the latest development for all of you that have either been exposed to this before or haven't, the Vista 2 is now going to be in here. The soft shells are in here, right? Uh, they came in on Tuesday. Nope. It's already happening. There will be some box. No, actually, the boxes that probably had liquids are gone. So the, the boxes being manufactured today have the Vista 2 soft gel in them, OK? which also simplifies the entire package now. Everything's in the package. And again, that was a really fun collaboration between production and the soft gel manufacturers, and you know, everybody's excited. So very good. There was a really lot of fun, a lot of people, certainly a really fun but difficult endeavor. We learned a lot, but we enjoyed it. Everybody did. Now, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, if you asked everybody, yeah, you'd have been like, oh my gosh, we got to catch up. But now they're there. They're caught up. So, oh yeah, we've got, we've never had night shift before, so now we have night shift making these. Um, we have the equipment, you know, we're upgrading the equipment. We've learned a lot. We're actually teaching the equipment manufacturers the next round of parts to make this better. So they came in, the guys that build this equipment came into our facility and said, okay, how, we're like, okay, here's what happens, this is what you got to do. So like, hey, you guys are telling us how to make new adjustments on the machine? We're like, yes, we are. Because we, we've been doing these adjustments and making it better, tweaking it. And so we've involved equipment manufacturers, box manufacturers. I told the box guy, we're going we're gonna to patent that cassette. You know, he laughed, of course. But, but they've never done that before. He makes boxes for other people. And they just still just throw the stack in the box, right? So it's loose in there. 
And now this, this little cassette. So I was proud of that, I know. I've said a number of times. But clinical research. Let's jump into some of the products that are in this package and why they're there from a, you know, I'm taking you back in time. Many of you have seen this. But I want to remind you that we've played with some of these things. How about the in vitro binding? Do you guys remember those experience, experiments with bind? I'll show you those in a second. So that's in the past. This is now underway. So we're going to start looking at glutathione in blood with patients to get us a better understanding of different kinds of glutathione and where it goes and so on. That's an ongoing one that you will see in the future from us. And then we're also looking at probiotic species and metabolomics. This is where I want to... Has anybody heard of beta glucuronidase? Remember I said we have a philosophy of trying to marry the right herbs, the right tissues, the right probiotics to fully access nature's potential. And if you guys remember Femicrin or M plus or MBC, each of those has what we call a microbiome or a herbalomic component. And there are others that we, you know, so do Moors and that. But those actually have a, in Femicrin, we actually added a unique microorganism because the microorganism helps convert plant compounds into useful um, progesterone, estrogen, compounds that bind to those receptors. So without the bacteria, the plants that we all know and love as female helping plants don't work. It takes a certain kind of bacterium in your GI to make that conversion, right? That's the nutribiome philosophy. Same thing with MPC and M+. So we're taking advantage of these really amazing organisms and starting to incorporate them into our formulas. However, there's a downside. Some of these microorganisms, some of them being Bacteroides species that you may have heard in the news, have an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. Where, is glucuronidase, where did you guys hear glucuronate when I said that? This is again a quiz. You raise your hand, I am high-fiving you. What, let me make it simpler, in what part of the liver was the glucuronate? Phase two, high-five. Who else said it? You're high-fiving. <laughs> high-five. Who else said that? Sorry, I'm rumbling. Now, the reason I'm high-fiving you is because that is very cool. And we care because dysbiosis is so critical to healing your patients, more than we ever thought. The glucuronate that is connected to toxins is there to eliminate the toxin from your body. Puts it into the bile, it ends up in the bile, it gets dumped into the duodenum, and then you want it to exit. If you have a gut full of organisms that have beta glucuronidase, guess what you've just done? You've clipped the glucuronate from the toxin, and the toxin gets reabsorbed, and now you become more toxic than you were before. Dysbiosis is critical, which is why MBC is in this package to try and force, even if they don't take hold, we're forcing your microbiome to be competitive, to switch it up, right? We're throwing some guys in there to, to rumble it, or they actually do take hold and start to grow, and they don't produce beta-glucuronidase. Beta but it's a problem. It's a real problem. I mentioned at the very beginning of this talk that drugs are becoming problematic for people, especially things like antidepressants. That's the process. They get glucuronated, and then they're on, uh, you guys remember the people committing suicide on, um, uh, say it again. It wasn't Wellbutrin, it wasn't Paxil, it was uh, Prozac. This is one of the reasons. Because a certain amount of the population produce these, pr these bacterium, they're dosing the drug, the drug's being eliminated by the liver, the bacteria are clipping it, the, the drug is getting back in through the colon, and now they've got 10 times the levels they had just from oral intake, right? This is not a theoretical, this is a real problem now. This is a studied and understood problem. You have in your packet the first page, which I will supply you the rest if you're interested, the first page of an article. Look for it right now. It's in your packet, I believe. And it's on that subject. Read the title for me. The 
the gut microbiota a major player in toxicity and environmental pollutions? Okay. It's in your packet somewhere. It's just one sheet. It's at the back. Okay. I put it in there to stimulate your reading. If you want the rest, I can provide you the PDF. It's a great article. And it, it really underlies the importance of our, of our microbiome. Both BIND and NBC in these packages contribute to that process and trying to benefit you in that process. BIND will actually bind up those things so they don't have access to bacteria that can clip it. Does that make sense? So for example, again, the Prozac will bind to the carbon so that the bacteria can't access it and cleave it and release it back in through the colon into the um, portal vein. So again, I want to encourage you to think about this at these cellular levels and all these different nuances that we're trying to cover for you in our product line. Let's look at the binding fun. So we did the binding experiment. I'll describe it quickly for you. You've, many of you have seen this. We're going to put this up on the website. I'll do it again. But what we did is we took a whole vial of heavy metals, well beyond anything that you could be exposed to unless you worked at a terrible, misrun battery plant in India, right? It was a nasty concoction of heavy metals. And we poured it. We took about, I think, I think we took about six capsules. And we opened the capsules up in the, the vessel. We stirred it around. And then we poured that through a filter, which trapped all of the carbon and fulvates and humates, right? Have to, uh, all the material, the solids. And the liquid went through, clear. We then tested the liquid and tested the powder. And this is what we found. The, li the, pow the, excuse me, the liquid for arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury, and there's little bars down here, it almost removed everything, even as we went higher and higher in concentration. Now the powder, this is the powder, 99 plus percent of the toxins remain stuck to the powder, which means that they are going to be eliminated in your feces, right? The liquid did. So that's the quick, and we've done this a number of times. Now, again, I said we, some get through, but that's because we did 100 times what you'd ever get. I think we were looking at, you know, 20 parts per million. And really, what you, when you guys do lab tests, they're in the parts per billion. So that's 1,000 times more dilute. We went as high as we could go. So that was the fun heavy metal test. Here's how it's done. We take, we mix, the, we mix them, then we filter them, and then we test all these samples for these heavy metals. So it was fun. Again, now you can see on my slides, as a review, just as a re reference, because it's not on the boxes. So keep this, you guys. Keep this for future reference. This is what's, is what's in each phase. So these are the products, the game we played. Here's how they're located in each phase. So that in case you want to reference any of the materials, for example, you want to know more about what Moore's is doing. As Moore's, you can reference your material on Moore's because you know it's right here, it's right here, and it's right here, for example, right? Now you know what's in them. Because right now they're not printed on the boxes with each product, just the label information is printed. Excuse me, the supplement facts. So if we begin with the cell, we can finish with healthy patients. And I think that's a, that's a model that many of you have experienced, right? And then this is my little thing. I think I've been, somebody else mentioned something like this, but I looked up my symptoms on the internet, and here's what I think I've got, all these life-threatening illnesses. The internet can be a tool, but it can also be a disaster for people. And that's why you guys are here learning about real information. And it's kind of fun to make jokes. Now, does anybody have any questions about the packages? Because I have one more thing to announce, but it's a brain switcher, and I don't want to go there until you guys are ready. We got cover am I been relatively clear? Yes. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, Warren. He's helping me this weekend. No, just kidding. Yeah, it's Warren's been fun. going on um, night Everybody, those of you that have already ordered them, I appreciate your patience. Um, like I said, it was an engineering learning curve. It was wonderful. Thank you all for your patience, those of you that have already been using this. Those of you guys that are using them, thank you for the feedback and the great successes you're having. Uh, we love them too. Like I said, the employees are starting to use them. It's kind of fun. That being said, archive everything I've told you. What part of the cell are we now interested in regarding detoxification? Smooth? I want you to say the whole dang word. Thank you. 
That's what we care about. That's what we want to take care of in this process. Archive that, because now we're going to talk about something really quickly. I want you guys to be excited, not only for this weekend, but we have an upcoming intensive in the fall, and we're doing some new things that I'm going to ask for your participation. It's a beta program for single nucleotide polymorphisms. Okay? We are creating, with the help of, again, the team of Systemic and others, a searchable process. So if you go to 23andMe, which we have now have an affiliate with, and right now, up until Father's Day, there's, they're $149. You submit your, and, and, and if you want information, um, at the very end of these slides, and on your book, you can see, you can email myself or Jerry, and we'll get, or yeah, and then we'll give you other names too, if you'd like. Uh, we'll give customer service. But long story short, because I know I'm short on time, we're creating the interpretation side of things. So 23andMe gives you data and some interpretation. We're also going to be creating interpretations and then making recommendations to you about those interpretations. Does that make sense? Whether it's heavy on, you know, now the easy, the low-hanging fruit are what? Methylation, right? Everybody's doing that. I mean, there's, we'll give you those as well. But there, we're going to look into other things. If you're willing to play this with me, then we're going to have some fun at the fall intensive reporting our findings between now and then, right? Okay, so just let me know. Email myself or Jerry, and I'll show you that in a second. But I think we can accumulate a little bit of data, and we'll keep it anonymous. But we'll start understanding some of the SNPs. Not every SNP is going to have a health impact, but many do, and we're learning every day new things. So again, this science is kind of took off in about 2006, and there are other people that have tried to really capitalize on it. We weren't ready for that, and now we're getting ready to do that in a more deliberate and educated manner. So we're asking for a beta test from you guys or whoever's interested. And we'll talk about these things at the Fall Intensive. What is the Fall Intensive about? It's about the immune system and how it elicits, let's say, a, a, after an infection or an injury or chronic inflammatory response, and then how does it resolve it? And we're going to be focusing on the resolution side of inflammation at that deal. Why do we care about that? Because that's the important side. The front side has to happen, right? If you get injured, you get subjected to an infection, viral, bacterial, fungal. The first part of inflammatory response has to happen. Your body has to do that in order to kill it. We don't want to stop that. We've spent the last two decades trying to stop that. That's a necessary thing to cure, to cure those incidences, right? That has to happen. We've spent all this time trying to stop that with our NSAIDs and steroids. Right? That's what they're trying to do. That's wrong. What we can do is focus on the downside, what's called resolution. That's what that intensive is going to be about. Resolving inflammation, not stopping it. It is a natural phenomenon. This SNP study will help us because we're going to look at inflammatory genes and see how we can impact them. So that's going to be our novel twist, not just methylation and what you can do elsewhere. We're going to look at genes that aren't being looked at in you guys and see if we can start uncovering some really neat things, okay? That being said, I will then, so the polymorphisms, we're going to use 23andMe to purchase. Uh, we can even use the detox program in some people. We'll play with that. We do have phase one and two enzyme SNPs that we know about. This will be a project that will be ongoing. Here's an example of the kind of data that we will generate. This is Genetic Genie. These are various SNPs. Not everything is meaningful, mind you. Some things are just what they are, and you have to interpret them carefully. But other things have more meaning, and we will be able to talk about those things and educate on those things. And then finally, uh, this is the two emails, and probably I'm going to talk to Jerry. You know, Jerry knows this is coming, but he's not quite prepared. Where is he? Thank you, Jerry. He's helping out with a lot of these projects, and he'll be, he and his wife will help me coordinate a lot of this. So in case I get busy, I won't leave you high and dry because these two fine people will be able to help you out. And that is it for me. Thank you all very much.